Okay, so next I want to change uh, from talking about um, graphs and their classes to uh, to algorithms and um, so to ch to get in the mood, let me uh, share with you this hilarious quote that I ran across. This is a quote from the oldest or second oldest mathematical text we have, which is roughly 3,600 years old, and it says that um, in this papyrus, in the abstract, they said that it's a thorough study of all things, insight in, into all that exists, knowledge of all obscure secrets. So, you know, whatever we are doing, it seems like the Egyptians already did it, or at least one of them thought that they already did it. Okay. So, the question of course is how do we get efficient approximation algorithm for graphs that belong to this uh, graph uh, classes that we looked at, and um, one natural algorithm for independent set is the local search algorithm. So the local search algorithm um, search for an independent set by starting from an empty set and keep adding item to the set. Well, the basic idea is that in every given point in time you have a local set and you look on all the sets that are in uh, uh, humming distance at most B from the current set. Here B is um, hopefully a constant. So, uh, you know, the number of uh, nearby sets is polynomial. It's roughly n to the B where n is the number of vertices in the graph. Or and uh, you check if any of those close by sets is... Uh, an independent set and it's uh, bigger than the current set. And if so, you do this exchange and you repeat this process until uh, you find uh, a maximum, uh, until you get stuck, right? Until none of your local uh, uh, nearby uh, neighbors are, are better than the current local solution. Okay? So this is the algorithm. It has the advantage of being amazingly simple. And of course, the natural question is for which algorithms, uh, so what kind of graphs, and also for what algorithm this kind of uh, 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 scheme yields a pitas, right? A, a 1 plus epsilon, or 1 minus epsilon approximation, depending if it's a maximization or minimization. So it turns out that all you need are those hereditary sublinear separators. So in particular, you can take the graph and you can apply a separator recursively until you break every, uh, you break the graph into patches where every patch has, um, you know, at most p vertices. Where p is some, you know, polynomial in one over epsilon. And uh, for our purposes, we would care about how many vertices are on the boundary. Now, for technical reasons, a vertex in the boundary is counted every time it appears on the boundary of a patch. So a vertex might be counted several times. So this total sum of boundary vertices with uh, multiplicity is called the excess. And, and if you apply this recursive separator and you have sublinear separator, you get a partition into those patches where the excess is epsilon fraction of n. And this is, of course, uh, well known that you can get such, uh, uh, you know, you can break graphs into those uh, patches. Uh, in particular, uh, for planar graphs, Fredrickson showed that even a stronger B division scheme where every patch is of size B as before, but the number of boundary vertices is only square root of B. And this is, you know, this uh, follows by careful usage of the planar separator theorem. Okay, um, so let's see why this, uh, um, you know, these divisions help us in arguing about uh, the local search algorithm. So consider the optimal solution and consider the local uh, optimum solution, and look on the graph that they induce. Now the intuition is that this graph is going to be uh, uh, very sparse, in particular it's going to fall into our classes of graphs that have small separators, so we go and we compute this small separator, uh, if we remove the uh, separator, uh, you know, we compute B division, right, using the separator we compute B division, we remove all the boundary vertices, this breaks up the graph into those patches, Every patch is of size at most b. In particular, the local search algorithm would have considered every one of those patches for as an exchange uh, uh, possibility, which implies readily that um, this is 
uh, it must be that for every patch the local and the optimal solution are balanced right they're roughly the same so all the local solution lost are essentially in the boundary vertices but since the boundary vertices are on only epsilon fraction of the total number of vertices this is the excess then we get an epsilon approximation so uh, and that's the argument right so it's kind of uh, uh, pretty simple and elegant and um, the nice thing about this algorithm it also works for other settings so for example uh, you can use it to compute independent set of fat objects so in geometric settings uh, an object is fat usually we speak about fat objects in low dimensions uh, if you look on the largest ball enclosed inside it and the smallest ball enclosing it and the ratio between the two radiuses is a constant and now you give me a set of fat objects. Now a set of fat objects is not necessarily low density because there might be a huge number of uh, uh, fat objects that overlap, for example, and contain a single point, for example, this red point on the slide. But the nice thing is that one can easily argue that if you give me a set of independent set of fat objects, then they have low density. And of course, if you give me two sets of independent objects, then their overlay is also low density by the additivity property of uh, low density uh, objects which readily implies that the uh, local search algorithm readily works for this case and give us a pitas right so we can get a pitas for independent set of fat objects it turns out that this works in more general cases for example when the objects are pseudo disks so uh, regions uh, a set of regions on the plane of pseudo disk if the boundary of every pair of them intersect uh, in at most two points they combinatorially behave like a disk um, so this is kind of nice because the pseudo disk case cannot be handled uh, by other techniques on the other hand for a fat object one can use other techniques to get a pita so uh, that's one advantage of this algorithm and by this cluster cover property of low density graph and polynomial expansion graph, in fact, the PITAS algorithm works all for, for dominating set. So um, that's kind of, uh, you know, that kind of implies that uh, this local search algorithm is, is pretty powerful. I should mention, however, that for the dominating set, unlike the independent set case, we require that the input is uh, a low density or polynomial expansion while uh, in the uh, while uh, in the other case um, for the independent case we only require it of the output to be small 